I thought it would be interesting to make a video where I share the photo structure of an app that I've been working on for a while. It's been in production for four years. So there's been a lot of like iterations and code changes and rewrites. And I just want to let you know right off the bat that I have not um, changed anything for this video. I mean, this is what it looks like. Uh, it's not pretty. And it's a little embarrassing to show some of the stuff going on here. And I'm not going to be able to touch everything because if I, if I talked about everything, this video could be hours long. So I'm just going to hit the highlights. Before we get into this, if you're a developer looking for a job in React Native or a company looking for React Native developers, um, check out my website, reactnativejobs.com. What I have open here is just the top level of the app. And I'm going to start from the bottom and go up. Um, most of the app is in this source folder, and I, I'm going to dig into that in a minute. But uh, first, let's keep going up. We got scripts, which just run some scripts. Um, I don't even know what's in there. Oh, a Firestore script. Um, next up is some screenshots. Uh, above that is patches. If you're not familiar with the patch package library, it's just for... Um, patching, you know, a piece of JavaScript code that, for a third-party library. Um, definitely comes in handy. We have the iOS folder. Um, if you've built a, a React Native app before, you're probably familiar with that. That houses all the native iOS code. Functions, um, those are my Firestore functions. Next up is uh, Firestore Sync. That's just where I sync uh, some production data into my local data for development. Fastlane, this has um, my Fastlane setup. I have another video series where I share um, kind of how to set up Fastlane for React Native. E2E, I use Detox for end-to-end -end testing. Um, Detox is great, but, uh, you know, and then testing is tough because like sometimes it just things just break all the time and, and get a little frustrating. So I had a, at one point I had a lot of end-to-end -end tests, but then every time I'd make a build, something something would go wrong, something would break. So now I just do uh, just some basic tests, uh, not not a whole lot. And we'll go up. Not much interesting. Android. So. Android is just all the, the native Android code for this app. So let's go down into source. And this is where the vast majority of everything is uh, at. So source, I, I've broken it down into a few things. Um, assets is just, you know, your basic images or, or, or things like that you're, you're bundling with the app. I have a components folder, and all the components in here are... Um, React Native components I've built that are used in multiple places. So they're going to be used in a bunch of different screens. Like this is a box. So a box is, is from Shopify's restyle, and it just wraps the native view. And so instead of using a view everywhere, I use a box everywhere. And there's some other ones in here, like some progress indicators and some icons and icon buttons and... Um, pickers, uh, just a variety of stuff. Um, it's a it's a workout app. Um, that, this is a workout app. So so some of this stuff is related to a workout. Like set is a workout set. You know workout date. So those are all the components. Constants. Uh, yeah, that's just you know constants I have in here. Now data data is a hot mess and. <laughs> Data is a hot mess because when I first built this app, you know, four years ago, I just used Redux and Redux Persist. And that worked fine for a little while. And then the app, because the app was very basic when I started. And then it got a little more complicated. So to manage the more complicated data, I started using Redux ORM. It's a library, Redux ORM. Eventually, um, I, I moved on to watermelon db and the reason i did that is because when i first started this app all the data data to the device was local on device and eventually i wanted 
I made it. So I needed to make a back end so I could sync, so people could sync their workouts from one device to another. So I, so to do that, I just need a better way to structure a database on the phone to sync it with the server, and also once you start logging a bunch of workouts into the app, Redux was so slow, and the performance was just was just terrible. So. So that was another reason I switched to Watermelon DB, and I actually I really tried to switch to Realm first. And you know this was a couple of years ago. I think Realm has improved a lot, but I, I spent a couple of weeks rewriting it to Realm and just scrapped it because um, it's hard to remember exactly why now. But I know I ran into some issues just getting everything to to work right. Um, one of the things was like uh, the Realm didn't support Hermes. That was kind of like a deal breaker. So I've been using Watermelon DB for a couple of years now, and it's great. Um, I sync it to Superbase, um, so that's what I use from the back end. But I also use Firebase in this app. Um, Firebase has uh, certain data that's like shared for all the users, and then Superbase has each individual user's data, you know, like their workouts and their schedule, workout schedules and those kinds of things. So I don't know, you know, maybe it's not best to have stuff in Firebase and then stuff in Superbase and all this stuff, but that's just kind of how it's evolved over time. So that's everything that's in the database folder is all the soup, um, all the uh, watermelon DB stuff. So that's pretty much it for data hooks. I only have a couple here. I don't really write very many custom hooks. Uh, I don't know. I just I just don't. No real reason why. Uh, models. This is like a, a what you might call a legacy folder. So, you know, I told you I switched from Redux, uh, from just Redux Persist to Redux ORM, then to Watermelon. Well, part of the app is still using this Redux and Redux ORM. So a user can build a workout um, template that they can reuse over and over. And these workout templates, they can build as, like, as big as they want. So it could be workouts for an entire month. Um, so that structure, that data structure, is I still use Redux ORM for that um, only because I did so much work already in it. I didn't want to redo it. And... That allows me to save, save it locally. So if they're editing um, a workout, you know, sometimes if you're planning a month of workouts, it could take you, it could take the user, you know, 30 minutes or something to build this workout plan. And if something happens in the middle of the workout, I don't want them to lose everything they've been working on. So, so I use Redux ORM with Redux Persist to save these kind of uh, workout plans in progress as it goes. So this, that's what this is, this models folder. It, it kind of doesn't make sense because it's outside of the data folder. But like I said, this is, you know, a four-year-old app and uh, there's just a lot of like crazy shit in here. Navigation folder, um, it's just a basic, uh, the navigation controller, um, sets up the basic uh, navigation. It's like tab, bottom tab navigation, and then I have some showing modals and showing overlays. I use Wix's react-native-navigation library. Um, I just like Wix's because, well, one reason is you can show a modal or an overlay, and you don't have to like embed the modal or the overlay like in the stack in your screen. So like, you can do it anywhere in your app. You can, so say you like use a Redux action and you know some kind of side effect of an action happening. You want to show a little pop up modal. Well, you can do that, and you can do that anytime in your app, anywhere, and it'll show that modal. And you don't have to have it in the screen that's being shown uh, at the time. So screens, um, it's kind of organized. A little bit on how the app is laid out. Um, so the app has three tabs. It has a 
one tab where you create your programs, uh, workout programs, one tab where you do all your workouts, and then one tab that's like your profile tab that has all your like history of exercises and some charts and things like that. So workout tab um, <clears throat> is this workout folder. So I have the workout screen and then the other screens and, and components that are specific to the workout tab. So, so, this, so, so at some point, I don't remember when, but at some point I started putting a components folder in the screen tab that has components only for this, uh, the workout screen. The program is where they build their program, the users build a program, so that's the other tab, main tab. The profile, as I mentioned, is the third main tab where you can see uh, you know, your charts and things like that. So preview, <laughs> I don't know why it's called preview, but preview has, uh, is where the user edits all of their workout programs, you know, where they can build their own um, or, or change an existing one. Some, at some point I called it preview. I think I called it preview because when I first started this app, you couldn't edit any of the programs, you know, it was just like hard coded. So you could only just look at it. Onboarding, um, yeah, it's pretty straightforward. Modals and overlays. So all the different modals and overlays that you could show throughout the app. Like if somebody hits, you know, like they're lifting weights and they, they lift the most they've ever done before, it'll like pop up a little overlay that says, you know, you hit a new record. The selectors, like I said, this is like, at some point I was using Redux a lot and I had a bunch of selectors, but now the only thing I have left is when a user is customizing a workout template or program. So store, uh, <laughs> this is another thing that's going to be like, if somebody saw it, I'd be like, what the hell are you doing? This is stupid. But I had Redux and I just got sick of using Redux and, um, you know, how much like code you had to write to get stuff, to get just like one uh, action or, or what have you. So I started using Zustand. I guess that's how you pronounce it, Zustand. And uh, so now I have both of those <laughs> state managers in there. Down here we have styles, uh, you know, nothing, just basic stuff, you know, theme of the app, some, some kind of animations. Uh, that I define there and use in other places. And then the last folder is utility. And these are just random, you know, functions that, that, uh, that I use throughout, throughout the app. Um, yeah, so that's, that's basically the entirety of it. Um, you know, it, it's kind of like a, it's a living, breathing thing, you know. It's something that I've worked on. I put like probably thousands of hours into this app, and I started this app. This is the first um, React Native app I ever built. So there's a lot of legacy stuff. There's a lot of crap in here, but it uh, it's the one I've spent the most time on. So yeah, so that's basically that's basically it, you know. And this isn't me. I don't think this is how you should structure an app. This is just how the current structure of my app, this is how it is. And it's not ideal, but uh, it's what works for me. And and, and uh, maybe one day I'll clean up this whole thing. <laughs> Anyways, that's it, guys.